This is me stuffing $18,000 into a magazine that a scammer in India is expecting. And this is an Apple AirTag that I'm going to hide in the package which will track its every move. But let me tell you how I got here. I'm a guy who likes to call these scammers up and waste their time and help others understand how these scams work. Hi, hi, am I speaking with the Geek Squad right now? Yes, we are from Geek Squad. And most of these phone scams work when you get a fake email from Amazon or PayPal telling you that you've overpaid for something and you need to call them up to cancel or get a refund. So you call them and they remote into your computer and make you think that you've got too big of a refund and you need to send cash in order to get it taken care of. And yes, people do fall for this. And back in the day, you'd be instructed to send money through Western Union or MoneyGram, but these companies have cracked down so hard on money transfers that you can't even send money to your closest friends overseas without getting grilled. So instead, scammers tell you to send money to one of their contacts in the States. And these guys are known as money mules because they move the money for the scammers. And after getting the cash, the mules then put it into a Bitcoin machine where it's deposited into the scammer's digital wallet. And they leave a small cut for the mule. But how do these scammers recruit their money mules? Well, sometimes they fool Americans into thinking they're working as couriers or payroll agents, and sometimes scammers have family or friends who immigrate to the States to go to school. And it's definitely hard to find a mule that you can trust with thousands of dollars in cash. But if you don't have one, some other scammers can hook you up with theirs. You can find scammers offering their services in Telegram and WhatsApp groups online. They offer cash pickup, pop-ups, and email blasting to those who need it. It's like a Walmart for scammers, or the Continental Hotel in the John Wick movies. You need a fake website or a fake social media profile? You can get everything you need to scam someone here. They just suck at keeping people out, because here I am just hanging out listening to these guys talking about scamming. And I'm going to pretend like I'm a fellow scammer who's just convinced an old guy that he needs to send me $18,500 and I need a mule to pick up the cash. And lucky for me, there's a guy in the group who's willing to rent out one of his. Now I am doing this because I want to give you all a special insider look into how these scammers work and how they coordinate their mules to pick up the cash and launder it to India. No one's ever done this before, so buckle up. Now the scammers kind of go back and forth between English and Hindi in these groups, so I get one of my partners in India to negotiate the deal for me. And one of the things that I love most about scam baiting is meeting former scammers who know the ins and the outs of the scam world and have chosen to work with me in exposing these crimes and making people aware. And my partner is a guy that I call the Green Man. And a guy who goes by the name of Morgan writes back to him and says, hello, are you looking for cash pickup? And Green Man says, yes. Then Morgan says, okay, which city and amount? Green Man says Utah is the state and the amount is $18,500. Customer is ready to mail the money in the box. To which the scammer replies, can he do FedEx also? And scammers will refer to their victims as clients or customers because to them, this is their business. So Morgan eventually says he's got a mule who's living in Austin, Texas. And to have him pick up the cash, it's going to be an 80% payout, which means Morgan and his mule are going to take 20% and make $3,700 off this deal. That's a ton of money just to have someone pick up a package for you. But what else are you going to do if you're a scammer? This is the criminal underworld. There's very few people you can trust. So Morgan says that once his mule picks up the cash, he'll send the funds within six to 12 hours. And it's usually a pretty standard request for the scammers in India to have their mules film themselves opening up the package. They do this to verify that the mules aren't secretly pocketing some of the cash for themselves. So Green Man makes sure to request a video from Morgan to which he agrees. So Green Man is the scammer and I'm the victim and I'm gonna ship the cash to the mule in Texas and he's going to film himself opening it and then I'll deposit the cash in a Bitcoin machine so Morgan can access the funds in India where he'll keep 20% and send the rest to the green man. Now, when a scammer asks you to send thousands of dollars in cash, they want you to do it discreetly because FedEx doesn't allow you to ship US currency and if they discover it, they'll seize the package. So the instructions they usually give their victims is to hide the cash between the pages of a book or a magazine, then wrap it in tin foil or bubble wrap to avoid being detected and I'm taping the air tag to the inside of the envelope where hopefully it won't be seen by the mule. Then I seal the envelope and I head to FedEx to do what I'm told. I shipped it overnight to Austin, Texas and I followed its progress the entire time. After a couple hours of sitting in the store, it was on a truck. Then it was at a regional FedEx facility, then the airport. And when I woke up, it was in Austin, Texas. Now, the mule wasn't home when it was delivered, so it was taken back to a Walgreens where it would be available for pickup. 
It sat there for two days, but eventually I got notified that the mule signed for the package. So I then hopped online to see that he was making his way home. This is the most exciting part. So I tell Green Man to follow up with Morgan and let him know that he's anxiously awaiting the funds. And Morgan checks the tracking and says he'll call the mule and get a video right away. I then see that the mule arrives at his apartment on the other side of town and Green Man and I just sit there waiting for the video to come through. And an hour goes by and I thought, what is he doing? If you're sitting on thousands of dollars in stolen money, you're gonna wanna get that counted and deposited before something happens. But eventually Morgan tells Green Man that the video is on its way. And ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, he actually delivered. Now I'm blurring his face out because I don't want my channel getting a strike and I'm hoping that it scares him and causes him to turn his life around and contribute to society in real and meaningful ways without this video holding him back. But you can clearly see that he's got the package and he's opening it up to show Morgan and the green man that he's not going to take any money for himself. But he's actually sent two videos. The first one goes until he opens the package and the second one starts right before he starts to go through the magazine. Which is weird because in video two he starts going through it and there is not a single dollar in there. On any of the pages. Where in the crap is the money? Something's wrong. And I immediately think that he's cut the video, took the money, then started another video to make me think that there was nothing in there. But when I line up the two videos it's seamless. This had to be a single recording that was just split in order to make the upload easier. But it still doesn't make any sense. Why isn't the cash in there? I filmed myself stuffing nearly every page and then sealing the envelope. I put $300 right there on the Brooke Shields cover story. The only way this cash disappeared is if somebody else opened it. But who could have done that? So I watched the video like six more times and then I saw it. The envelope is sealed on the long side, not the short side. In fact, that's how you're supposed to open these things. You just pull the string. Why in the world is he using a knife to cut along the hardest part of the envelope? He's doing it because the envelope has previously been opened and resealed. And he's reopening what has already been opened. Except his knife is as dull as a spoon and his glue has completely warped the edge. He apparently screwed up the end too. He spent the whole hour carefully cutting this flap removed the magazine, took the cash, put the magazine back in the envelope and did his best to reseal it for the video. And it still looks like crap. That's why he didn't just open the package the right way because he's trying to scam the green man. He's not going to take 20%. Him and Morgan are going to take everything. These scammers aren't just out to scam Americans. They'll scam anyone they meet, even fellow scammers these freaking jokers. There really is no honor among thieves. And Green Man acts surprised, and Morgan is asking why the customer would do this. He tries to tell the Green Man that his customer is playing with him. But who's really playing a trick on who? Because if you think for a second that I shipped real cash, then it means that this fake cash is pretty convincing. I bought a couple stacks off Amazon for like $9, and unless you look really closely, you may not notice the difference. And considering Morgan is trying to tell the green man that the package came empty, it tells me he hasn't figured out that the cash is fake yet either. The mule probably just pulled it out as fast as he can so he could make the video, and he was in such a hurry to seal it that he didn't even notice the air tag taped to the inside of the envelope. Because at this point, I'm still tracking him, and I can see him leave. And I think that he's headed to the Bitcoin machine where he's going to try and make a deposit. <laughs> and I just wish that I had some way to watch this loser stick those fake cash bills into a Bitcoin ATM and then walk back to his car in shame to tell his boss in India that they had just both been played. And I'm guessing that he learned something was up because he soon blocked the green man. It kind of feels good to waste their time and their gas in order to show you how scammers launder their money. But this is how it's done. So if you ever have someone from Amazon or PayPal telling you to mail cash, now you know what's really happening. And at the time that I'm editing this, I can see that the AirTag is still at his apartment, which means that he hasn't found it, and he rarely takes out the trash. So thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more scam stories and other things to watch out for.